Hi everybody, welcome back. I want to talk today about some skincare products that have really helped to soothe and calm down my skin when I have had some allergic reactions in the past. Now, over the past year, I would say, probably a year and a half maybe, I've had three allergic reactions. The first two allergic reactions were to the same product, but I didn't realise with the first reaction what it was that I reacted to. So, that is why I reacted a second time because I thought that product was okay, started using it again and then turned out that was the culprit. And then with my recent allergic reaction, I had a microdermabrasion facial and my skin just really didn't like it. Got really inflamed, really red across here, lots of white little pimples on my face and was really hot and itchy and uncomfortable. So I just really want to talk about in today's video my... I suppose routine when that has happened and the skincare products that have really helped with my skin in terms of its recovery. So before I get into it just want to say I'm not a dermatologist. I did study beauty therapy around about 10 or 12 years ago now so I know a little bit but yeah I'm not a trained dermatologist so please go and reach out to a dermatologist if you have specific skin conditions and you want some professional advice I am just going to be talking about the products that worked for me and what has helped me when I've had recent allergic reactions so whenever your skin has a reaction like this the first thing you want to do is scale everything back you want to get rid of any actives in your skincare routine so that means no retinol and no exfoliating acids you want to keep it really incredibly simple and by that I mean a gentle cleanser and a gentle hydrating moisturizer ideally completely fragrance free and ideally as well aimed at sensitive skin because you know these products are going to be gentle and they are usually nine times out of ten fragrance free as well now I have some products here to the side of me but I don't have any of the cleansers that I've used previously. Now when my first two allergic reactions happened I think I either bought or I had in my collection somewhere the CeraVe hydrating cleanser and when that allergic reaction happened I googled what products to use to help calm and soothe the skin and that cleanser was recommended. However, I know there are some people out there who don't really tolerate the CeraVe cleansers. They find that they sort of tingle around here. I don't experience any of that. The CeraVe hydrating cleanser on my skin is really well tolerated and I get on with it fine. So I started using that. I used it in the morning and of an evening. I took one pump over dry skin, massaged it in and then with my hands and with water, I washed it off. So when I say you want to reduce any actives, you want to get rid of any retinol and any exfoliating acids, I also wanted to get rid of any exfoliating mechanisms and so by that I mean using a cleansing cloth because using cleansing cloth is a form of exfoliation in a way because you're gently buffing away the top layer of your skin cells. So when I was cleansing my face when I've had reactions, I have only used my hands and water. I haven't used any cleansing cloths because it is a little bit too harsh and too abrasive for skin that is red and angry and sensitized. So a gentle cleanser and hands only. La Roche-Posay do some really good gentle cleansers as well. I will link some down below or maybe show pictures and or both. But it's got to be gentle and it's got to be hydrating. So milk cleansers are a good idea or cream cleansers. Try not to go for foaming cleansers in the traditional sense because they are quite stripping and quite drying and definitely no cleansers that have any form of exfoliating acid in as well. So you then want to follow it up with a moisturiser and you want again gentle and that is the key word in this video a gentle hydrating moisturiser. So when I had my first reaction I actually went out and bought a couple of barrier repair creams and the first one I bought was Dermalogica Barrier Repair a 30ml tube which costs around about 40-45 quid so it is quite expensive however it does come highly recommended and I take a lot of my skincare advice from Caroline Hirons and this is a product that she recommends for when your skin has a reaction. It has a nozzle head and the texture is like a gel, it's a clear gel, it doesn't move, it's not going to run down your hands and it's quite thick but easy to blend in and it leaves like a light thin layer over your face now if you are going to put it all over your face you do need a fair amount it's not one of those products where a little goes a long way but obviously if you're only going to put it on areas where you've had your reaction you aren't going to use that much and you can feel it 
on the surface of your skin. My skin feels very, very soft, but because it forms like a protective barrier, nothing is gonna get into your skin and further agitate it. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't the product that I have kind of focused on when I have had my allergic reactions. It is very good and I would highly recommend it. However, the product that I come back to time and time again even when my skin hasn't had a reaction, is my La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Soothing Repairing Balm. And I have actually cut mine open and I'm scooping the rest out. This is a 100ml tube and I think this retails for around about £10 perhaps. I don't know exactly how much it costs but it is much more reasonable than the Dermalogica one and three times the size. And this one has much more of a moisturiser consistency so it is a white lotion you can see it on my hand there and this one does blend in like a normal moisturizing cream so if you're not that keen on the texture of the gel from Dermalogica you might get on better with this um, barrier cream from La Roche-Posay. Sinks in in my opinion a lot nicer but it really just depends on your preferences and what you prefer to kind of feel on your skin. I prefer the feeling of the La Roche-Posay balm. And with this one you can use as that targeted treatment so only on areas of sensitivity and redness or you can use it all over your face and that's what I did. I used it all over my face like a moisturiser and then I reapplied it throughout the day as and when I felt necessary. Now when you apply it initially it does make you look a little bit like Casper. It is akin to sun lotion that you rub in and it just makes your skin go white so you do have to spend a small amount of time i suppose rubbing this in and getting rid of any whiteness any white streaks and letting it sort of sink and settle into your skin but once it has been all rubbed in and there are no traces of white marks on your face it is really soothing and really hydrating and i love this product this product is a skincare hero. It is incredible. If you have never tried it before, I would recommend you go out and get it. Even if your skin isn't irritated or sensitive or angry, it is amazing. Some people use it as a targeted spot treatment. So if you have a few spots going on, I've got one around here somewhere, you can apply it just on that spot and it helps the spot heal. However, I have heard that some people with acne do find this a little bit too much when applied all over the face. But with any product, it's real hit and miss. If it works for you, it might not work for somebody else. So with anything, you've got to try it for yourself and see if it works for you or not. And I use this most days when I don't have sensitivity anyway. So my skin is quite dehydrated and often when I've done my skincare routine of a morning or of an evening, after I've put my moisturiser on, I have noticed that I get some tightness around here or around my mouth and nose and chin area. Pop a little bit of this on, rub it in and that dryness and tightness is immediately eliminated. I don't notice any further dryness or tightness this is just incredible in terms of hydrating your face and soothing your skin as well. So with my most recent allergic reaction, I used a gentle cleanser. I actually used the Elemis Gentle Foaming Cleanser, which my skin tolerates really well. I've used that multiple times before. However, I don't really know why it's called a foaming cleanser because it's not a foaming cleanser in the traditional sense. It's just a hydrating cream cleanser very misleadingly named i think they should maybe kind of readjust the name of that because it's it's in my opinion not a foaming cleanser but anyway i used that cleanser and then i followed it up with this as a face moisturizer and the redness and the itchiness and the slight pain did subside fairly quickly with using this as my moisturizer and even though my skin has healed now, my skin has calmed down, I am continuing to use this as my moisturiser both morning and evening. And that's because I don't want to go back to using whatever moisturiser I was using beforehand and risk disrupting my skin barrier by switching up my products. I thought, let's stick with this, keep using this as a moisturiser until it's all used up. And I have cut it open and I am quite close to using this up, maybe another week or two. And once this product has been finished off, I will be getting another one because it honestly is incredible. I will never be without this product now, regardless of whether my skin is angry or not, sensitive or not. It's just absolutely incredible. I love it. La Roche-Posay, please do not ever change the formula of this. Please don't ever stop making this. It is such a fantastic product and I love it so much. 
So first time around, because I didn't really know what my skin would and wouldn't tolerate, what would work on my skin, what would help clear it up a bit faster, I actually ended up buying three barrier repair creams. So the Dermalogica one and the La Roche-Posay, and also this one, the Relida Skin Food. And you can get the original, which is this one, or the Skin Food Light, which isn't as greasy or as heavy. Now, the texture of this is greasy. It is thick. It does have a scent to it. It's quite botanical, quite refreshing, but it is very thick, very greasy, does require quite a lot of rubbing in. And unlike the Dermalogica Barrier Repair, with the Relida, you can get away with using a lot less. It does stretch quite far. So like a pea-sized amount warmed up between your fingers can do your whole face. And it is a little bit tacky, it is a little bit sticky afterwards, so it might not be the right texture for you if you don't like feeling products on your face. And you definitely need to wash your hands afterwards because your, your fingers do get quite sticky. So because of that, this might be a product that's best applied of an evening. So it can sink in overnight and if it gets on your pillow, it doesn't really matter. But during the day, if you've got people to see, places to go, you might not want something as thick and greasy and heavy and balm-like as this. However, this is really, really good as well though. This is very hydrating, very soothing, very calming. But because it's fragranced, I didn't use this straight away. I used the La Roche-Posay one straight away because it's fragrance free. I didn't want to run the risk of my skin reacting even further to something that's got fragrance in. So once my skin had calmed down, this is when I would start applying a balm like this. And this is really good, I found, during the day when you need a little bit of touch up. I've applied some of this because I feel like you can notice this for a lot longer than the other two. Its texture does seem to linger that bit longer on your face. so. With products like the Roche-Posay, I feel like I would have to apply that more frequently than the Walida. And the Walida is really cheap as well. It's probably around about £7. I think I remember paying something like that for it. So with these creams here, you have a range of different textures, different finishes. These two are unfragranced. This one is fragranced and different price tags as well. So really does depend how much money you have to spend and the type of texture and consistency you like using. However, the one that I would recommend above all of them, if I had a choice between only one of them, La Roche-Posay for definite. But another good cream that you might want to try is Cetraben. And this is one that I bought a few weeks ago before I had my allergic reaction and I did start using it. This was like my evening moisturiser. has a pump and this is more of that traditional moisturiser compared to the others. But its texture is really thick and really bouncy. So this is nice for that real whack of hydration. Probably better suited, I've got loads on my hand now, probably better suited to an evening so you can really kind of let it sink in. But this would be really nice as a moisturiser when your skin is just, you know, not sensitive or, or not playing up. And once I've finished off my La Roche-Posay balm, I will start using this as my moisturiser again because it is designed for dry, itchy and eczema prone skin. So you know it's good for skin that does have some sort of issues with sensitivity and dryness and needs products that are really gentle and really hydrating with no fragrance. And my hands now feel really moisturised. And this was about four or five quid from Boots, so really, really purse friendly. Okay, so I've spoken about the cleansers and the moisturisers that I've used that have helped my skin. Now, because we are in summer, I have needed to wear an SPF. And if you're going out, you need to pop on an SPF anyway. If you're just stuck inside, not going anywhere, and you can avoid it when your skin is irritated and has had an allergic reaction, maybe try not to wear an SPF because it's, it's just another layer and it's quite a thick and heavy layer. But if you are going to expose yourself to sun, please put some on. And the two SPFs that I'm using at the moment are the Garnier Anti-Dark Spots and Anti-Pollution Super UV SPF 50. This is my preferred one because it's really light sinks in really well and it's really easy to apply so you have a little nozzle and I just squeeze out enough product onto two fingers and that's enough for my face and neck. And then the other one that I am dipping in and out of is my Bondi Sands Face SPF 50. These, I'm pretty sure the Garnier one as well, but the Bondi Sands one for definite is fragrance free. So good for sensitive skin. 
and they both offer SPF 50 as well so you're getting that really high level of sun protection. But I wouldn't repurchase either of these SPFs and that's because neither of them are mineral SPFs. And if you have sensitive skin, if you do react to products, it is a good idea going for a mineral SPF just so you can hopefully reduce the chances of reacting to an SPF. Having a mineral one is a good idea so once these are used up, even though I like them both, in particular the Garnier one, I will try a mineral one. So it takes my skin a good week to really start to kind of get better. Day three or day four is the worst. It's where my skin is the most red it's going to be. It's going to be the most angry. It's going to be the most painful and the most itchy. But after about a week is when I can start to add in a bit more hydration. And by that, I mean a hydrating hyaluronic acid serum like this Vichy 89 one. I don't have much left of this one at all. So after I have cleansed my skin with one of the cleansers that I spoke about, whilst my skin is still damp, I will put on a pump of this. And when your skin is having a reaction, making sure that it's really well hydrated is very important. So that can be reapplying lots of these moisturising barrier repair creams or going in with a face mist like this Aven one that I've got a thermal spring water and applying a bit of hyaluronic acid serum. But make sure that the serum is one that your skin can tolerate. Ideally it's for sensitive skin, it's fragrance free. We don't want to be aggravating our skin even further. And when I've had my allergic reactions before, once the white pustules have kind of gone down a little bit in their place is lots of dryness lots of flaky dry skin so it's really important that I get in a lot of hydration so definitely a hyaluronic acid serum sandwiched between a hydrating mist and then followed up with that barrier repair cream and then throughout the day if I notice that dryness is coming back a little bit I can reapply these Another good option might be a product such as this. This is the Aveeno Calm and Restore Triple Oat Serum and this is for sensitive skin. The Aveeno Oat line, the Calm and Restore line, is designed for sensitive skin but again you want to make sure that this is a product that you have tried and that you know you can tolerate. I haven't actually tried this product yet so I don't know if my skin can tolerate it but it does come highly recommended and that's why I bought it because it is designed for dehydrated skin that is sensitive and then once my skin has I suppose fully healed it's all about keeping it that way making sure that I'm not introducing loads of new products if I want to start adding in new products I do it slowly so the only thing that I have recently changed is my cleanser and that's just because I've run out of my Elemis cleanser that I was using and so far so good touch wood my skin is reacting fine to the one that I'm using in its place, which is an e.l.f. one. So my routine at the moment still is very simple. It's a cleanser, hyaluronic acid serum and a moisturiser. But in about a week or two, perhaps, once I have finished off this hyaluronic acid serum, I'm going to start using a vitamin C of a morning, one that contains a hyaluronic acid in it as well to provide some hydration. But you really want to take things slowly when it comes to reintroducing products into your skin after an allergic reaction. And if you're unsure of what products to go for, look at brands that are designed for sensitive skins. Now, I'm not sure if this rule really kind of exists anymore, but I've heard that products that have white packaging with blue or black writing tend to be your more French pharmacy type of brands that are designed for sensitive skin. So brands like La Roche-Posay do some brilliant products and they have different lines for different skin types. And also Curel as well is designed for sensitive and dry skins. So if you're unsure, check out La Roche-Posay and check out Curel. So I hope that has been interesting or beneficial. If you have, like me, unfortunately had any allergic reactions, please let me know in the comments down below what products have worked for you and what products you swear by for dry skin or for sensitive skin. Really would like to know the products that you recommend. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon for my next one.